Hello, welcome to our third episode of our Over the Limit podcast. Um, second episode where we will have a guest. He's called Robin Freins. Um, we both know him since since a long time, so it should be an interesting conversation. Um, a lot of gossip from the past. But uh, first of all, some bullshit between the two of us. Uh, <laughs> what have you been up to? Any other handicaps bes- on golf besides your normal, regular life handicaps? or? <laughs> Uh, I didn't actually play any golf anymore. It's getting a bit too cold nowadays. Um, I'm training two times a week still, same as last time. Um, yeah, what else have been new? Yeah, the Christmas days are coming, so buying Christmas presents for everyone. Um, yeah, basically that's it. I don't have so much in my life, no? actually. Doing some simulator lately, um, enjoying that a bit again. Uh, I'm doing some, some battles with friends, playing some Call of Duty. Do you know already when your next race is? Uh, yes, it will be 24 hours of Dubai in around 14, 15 of January. Okay. So, um, yeah, it's maybe not the coolest or not the most exciting race for everyone, but it's a, it's a very good race to prepare your season for everybody, especially for us uh, with the new BMW to, to try out how everything goes, to do the 24-hour race. And on top of that, there's always some nice weather there. There's a little bit of sun. It's not super some hot. camels. Yeah, maybe can ride a camel again if I win, but um, it's nice weather, so that's also important. Okay. Um, another topic, last time we went karting, this time we went again, we do it now every Wednesday actually. I go every Wednesday, Well, I, I think I, this is the last time you come when it's not warm. Yeah, for sure, I mean, I don't know who's uh, having some great ideas to go karting on minus six with the uh, rain, so, uh, but anyway, I was very happy again, I had a very good day. Uh, how was your day on karting? It was good. It was fun. It was very wet and cold, like you said. But uh, yeah, I mean, you still have your old go kart. Besides the the BS <laughs> talk, uh, you drove with my kart as well, and I drove with your one. And especially in the wet, it's it's quite a different. And I spent the whole evening looking from hmm, should I buy a new one or not. But it's it, it's like twelve grand for a new complete new go kart without getting a deal. So I'm like, I'll stick with the old one for the winter and then. I'm off racing anyway as well, so, but it's, uh, it's fun. Um, <laughs> had to yeah, have fun, we both went off at the same <laughs> I time. I just want to say. I saw you coming, wanted to outbreak me, he's like, mm, no, and then we both outbreak each other and went off through the mud and... <laughs> that was, <laughs> was my... I, I... So stupid, I was sleeping last night. <laughs> yeah, normal. Me too. Me too. Uh, <laughs> and I thought to myself, uh, I have to clean my suit that I, uh, that I was wearing that day because it was wet and dirty. And I told myself, when I wake up in the morning, I'm going to put it in. And now I forgot. So it will be... It, it will walk like, away from yeah. itself. <laughs> it will wake up at one stage. No. No, for me, the same. I'm enjoying the the off-season time a bit with the family. And I have to go to Qatar on Sunday for two days. It's a press conference. It's nice, actually. Press conference for the wet race next year. Uh, staying in the W Hotel. A uh, camel ride in the morning. Press conference. And then night fly back. So... It's the worst trips. Could be worse. And then we have Porsche Night of Champions. Uh, this didn't happen yet? No, on the 17th. We have like a day before where we take typical pictures for next year and Puma measurements and that is Night of Champions. Um, it's not really a party because like all the board members are there, so it's not the time to be drunk and laying on the floor. But <laughs> Depends how you look at it, you know. If, if you can get them with you laying drunk on the floor, it's a plus. That's a good point. But I'm uh, uh, going to pass um, I'm actually thinking of I'm so sick of the weather here between yeah. then and Christmas just going to Spain for a week I looked at the flights it's like 36 euros up and down really? if the weather is good I'll take my bike do some training but there but yeah the weather is like what 20 degrees? 15, 20 but here it's freezing and, yeah. and raining so I just went for a bike ride and my fingers are still cold I know okay. you don't have the problem but again, again a great idea to go minus 6 in the wet yeah. Or bike ride. It's called commitment. <laughs> <laughs> so enough crap between the two of us, I think. Um, it's time to uh, to call in our guest, uh, the very famous Robin Freins. Actually, I don't see him. I don't know where he went. <laughs> he's in my gym. I can, I can hardly imagine he's doing any exercises, but <laughs> so here it comes. Yeah. <laughs> 
I was scared you would fall asleep already, but. <laughs> Hello. Hey. <laughs> Were you actually exercising, or are you? And uh, no, just checking how it actually looks like. Okay. <laughs> Not that big. <laughs> so yeah, welcome to uh, our podcast. I know you are very, very much looking forward to it, and. Probably, I'm curious how it goes. Probably yeah. a bit nervous and everything. Yeah. Always <laughs> nervous, yeah. Very. <laughs> no, but I think we both go back very far with, with Robin, me a bit further. Because um, I remember you as actually my f very first rival whenever I started yeah. motorsports and karting. Rival. When I was a kid. The only thing I remember pretty well is the spa race we did together. <laughs> In the minis. Was one of my things to talk about, yeah. Yeah, that's the only thing I remember from us in the young days. So I forgot how old we were, like 9, 10? Nah, 12, I think. Because uh, I started when I was 12. Yeah? Well, I, I only remember that we overtook each other seven times a lap, <laughs> and I lost out in the last lap in the last corner. <laughs> yeah, I remember it. Yeah. But it was funny because it was three heats, and all the three heats went like this, and we never crashed or had no. proper contact. No, yeah. no, no, no. You were driving at DRS? No? Yeah, with Guy Denise, yeah. Yeah, and I was at uh, GKS, yeah. We're the only ones, right? Yeah, we're just the two of us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was a third guy, but he was in a different class. Well, I was thinking about his name. Rem Remco? No. Oh, I can't remember. Remus? No, I don't know. The but Pascal. He, no, 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 he was like this small kid, but he was at the, he had this Comer, Comet engine or ah, whatever. Ah, Falco. Falco. Yeah, 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 I remember. <laughs> so he was like seconds a lap off. Yeah, he was like a lap down, probably. So it was only three of you in the... In the yeah, this yeah, was the regional VAS championship. Yeah, high level. Yeah. <laughs> the Belgium championship was quite a high level, actually. Back with, then. Uh, with the cadets, not with the minis, no? Mm. I can't remember much from the minis. Only that race, which was a nightmare <laughs> for me. I have a bad memory, but I recall that one. I, well, it's I have a good memory after my um, concussion I had. Before that, I yeah? can't remember much. Which concussion? I had a concussion when I was, uh, I think I was like 12 or something or 13. Um, not to do with racing, I just fell on the stone with my head and can't remember much before. Explains a lot. Yeah, since then everything went wrong. Chris had the same issue <laughs> when he was alive. So. Yeah, um, I'm a bit earlier, but and then we actually joined teams because I joined GKS. Yeah, as well. And we drove for. But you were always a class ahead. One year, yeah, and then we were together. Yeah, and then we... true, true. I still remember that you were driving ICA in the the cool days with the good engines, right. and when I jumped, it was the KF2 with the power valve and all that nonsense it was yeah. a shame I only did one race with the good ICA engines it was in Spain somewhere can't remember but that was definitely good times getting old yep <laughs> very you've um, you had a good single series career towards F1 um, you've basically won everything almost except of GP2 but you didn't do a season they only did four rounds or something yeah, yeah. I got uh, lapped, by the way, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Explain a bit how uh, how this was for you, because I mean we've both experienced it. Lawrence a bit more than I did, but uh, to able to be able to win all the series must be pretty you, cool. You didn't experience that part, but no, no, I only yeah. won one race, so I was very happy <laughs> with that. So um, it's a bit of my own world, really. Um, just step by step. Obviously, I was driving form BMW for two years. And um, then the, the two liter one and the point was for me there was at that time there was a lot of pressure on my shoulders because if you win the championship in two liters, this was back in 2011, uh, you will win a half million euros to go back to, uh, to go further to World Series 3.5. So I knew that if I would not win the championship, my career will be, I wouldn't say over, but very different as it's is now so that's why I probably was on my in my own world I was really focusing of what I wanted to do what I wanted to reach and when the point that I wasn't World Series and I have won World Series then everything was 
different again, and not in a good way. I didn't like the times after the World Series times. Okay, why is this, that? Because before beforehand, you are into racing, you're enjoying that you're driving. Of obviously, you're you're enjoying that you are on a good team, you have a good car, everything goes well. You know, you're fighting for wins, you're fighting for good podiums, and I wouldn't say life is easy, but you enjoy it at least, right? But then after that, um, after my World Series year, so this was the end of 2012, it's just been very difficult because I wasn't like knocking on the door of Formula One, let's say, and I just didn't really got an opportunity to drive in, in I would say, in a proper, obviously I, I did some Formula One tests, but um, I didn't get a, a real chance in Formula One. And this for me was very difficult to handle as I saw many other drivers which I raced against, which got an opportunity for Formula One just because they brought 10 million in or 15 million or whatever. Mm. And this I could not handle because I was always like, if you win, you get an opportunity. And they, those other guys didn't win and they got an opportunity. So I couldn't swallow that pill. No. And I was very frustrated at that moment. So I, this was 13 or 14. I was very unhappy with myself, with the situation. And is that why Formula One never happened, you think? Or what do you th why do you think it never happened? Um, I definitely closed the door to Formula One in 14. So I, I've been around two years. I uh, was test driver at Sauber in 13. I did some GP2 races. Um, for free in a team which was brand new it was still okay I've, I've won one race I got lap once so it was really upside down um, but it, it was not a great team it was uh, very low budget and you know I was losing camber plates during the race and stuff like that so <laughs> it was idea. not great <laughs> um, but then in uh, 14 I was still reserved for Caterham and I was very close to get that seat instead of Kobayashi but he had a, a deal made with Air Asia and Japan and with this Fernandez guy. Anyway, I didn't get the seat eventually. And then I had contact with Renault, with um, Cyril Apitabul a lot. And he was basically telling me the same story that, you know, you will get an opportunity and Renault will come back to F1 and maybe next year or maybe the year after. And... It was so unsure about everything and I wasn't driving. I was frustrated because I wasn't driving and I wanted to drive and I didn't earn any money at that, that moment. I was 22 or 21, 22 or something like that. So if I want to make a career out of it, um, meaning that I would earn money out of it, I needed to do a different tour and that's why I decided we had contact back then with you know with WT joining you with with WT and eventually being an Audi driver and so forth and and earning some money out of racing uh, obviously it started as a hobby but it's work now and you need to do perform all the time it's it's a hard world as we all know um, so that's why I decided to leave Formula One alone uh, close the door and it wasn't if it wasn't easy for me in 14, 15, 16, let's say, because obviously, you know, you are dreaming for phone one for many years and to close the door, it's not like, yeah, you know, uh, we, we, we move on with, with our lives. It's, it's just, it's, yeah, just frustrated for quite a while, um, but that's been passed a long time. So especially when I jumped in the first time in that GT3 in Paul Ricard, I was shocked. <laughs> I can imagine, yeah, especially was, if you come from a Formula One car. I was really shocked. In Paul Ricard. Uh, <laughs> I mean, combination. first I was like, I don't know, two seconds off or something. Um, and this was this uh, corner called Senior, end of the straight. Yeah. And for me, it was like, you know, no brainer, it's easy flat. But I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I tried two times, spun two times, and I was thinking to myself, like, I took uh, you know the wrong call here. I should yeah. have tried to keep in to try to keep in, uh, in Formula One. But looking back now, I think um, yeah, looking at my career, I'm, I'm quite happy where I am. Um, so but you never know 
how your life would be if I would still pursue my dream into Formula One. You don't know. I think everybody always asks that question, but I mean, in the end, if you're happy where you are now, yeah. that's the most important because you don't know what you would have if you would have been happy if you would be in Formula One now, driving for um, Alfa Romeo and fighting for second last. You would be in Formula One. Your dream would be your dream would be achieved. You would be earning. Some well, if you're money. a professional in Formula One and you're in those teams, like for example Kevin Kevin Magnussen, it's it's different than being having to be a pay driver for 20 years, which is not possible. Yeah, but but for me, would it make you happy if you have a life like Lewis or a life like Max now? Uh, for me, I, I would. That would not make me happy. I mean, it's a luxury question because it's a position we'll never be in. But no, it's for, give and take. Well, but for sure, there's a lot of downsides of it as well. And I don't regret anything. Well, I didn't either. But like, okay, I was never, I was far from being that close on you, but ah, it's it's difficult to to say. Do I regret it? Um, for sure, not now. If I would know how my life would turn out to be different, um, how my life would look, it would be easy to say like, oh, I should have taken route A or route B or whatever. But it's not how life works. So those have well, you did some F one tests. This just. Uh, you just already mentioned, but just explain the how was it like? Okay, back then Formula One was very different than it is now. But it was it one of the di most difficult, one of the harder cars you've driven in your life? Or uh, honestly, first time I drove the F1. Um, well, first time was actually a demo car, which just had a lot of understeer. Uh, <laughs> was with uh, Red Bull in Moscow because this was like half price. If you lead in a championship halfway, you get like a demo run, which is six laps. Yeah, it's a Formula One car. It's it's made very safe, so I'm not really calling that as my very first experience in Formula One. Um, so I will take Abu Dhabi then, which was my first official test in Sauber, coming from World Series. Honestly, it was the easiest car I've dr driven so far yeah. in the time I was, you know. I've, I drove many many different cars and heading to Formula One, I was like, okay, now I'm going to feel how it really feels like. And it was very easy. Yeah. yeah. And easy to be on the pace as well? Or? Yeah. yeah. From, uh, I mean, for sure, everybody is different, but for me, it's 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 been very easy from lap four or five. I'm like, okay, I understand the car. It's, you know, it's it moves a bit here and it's, it's yeah. The slow speed corners were very similar to World Series because we were driving Michelin tires and it was a better tire. The high speed Formula 1 was a bit better sure. and Formula 1 was reaching 340 or whatever back then while World Series was reaching uh, 290 and World Series was in that time only 7 seconds of Formula 1. Yeah. So the pure difference on corner speed, nothing. Okay, That's one thing I... One day, I just want to drive like that the Red Bull you drove or whatever, like a proper yeah. Formula One car, just 20 laps somewhere, just to know how it feels. That's the only thing I, yeah, I still want to do of, the form of everything concerning Formula One. Yeah, for sure. But if you jump from GT to Formula One, it's a different world. For yeah, sure. yeah. I mean, exactly. I grew up to this moment. I've had many steps, you know, I like... Four BMW, World Two Liters, World Series, etc., and mm -hmm. then you you think there's another step coming. It is a bit of a step. There's more software involved. You can change the complete car mm -hmm. on the steering wheel, etc. But the actual pace, the actual grip back then was nothing spectacular. I I do remember that with the Sauber car, it was very lazy. It was very hanging in the corners. Like everything happened so slow. Um, but then in the Red Bull car, two days later, it was very easy to drive. Okay. Like you can drive over big curbs and the car would not move. And right. It was so easy. Okay. I understand why Vettel won <laughs> four championships. That's going to be the, the quote of the, yeah. the release of the podcast. <laughs> I understand why Vettel won. <laughs> Point. Yeah. One question which you probably like or don't like to be asked, but we I mean, need a bit of uh, a gossip in the podcast. Um, you remember the, or it was, I didn't really follow that time, I saw it later, but the famous Red Bull article in uh, in the newspaper. Uh, yeah. Where the, the headline was Red Bull treats you as dogs. Yeah, everybody read that one. <laughs> um, and I think 
I mean, you just said it a little bit. Of, I'll, I'll let you do the explanation after yourself. But you said that you were not really happy at that point in your life or with the situation probably neither. And, and a bad journalist probably took a lot out of context. But um, Well, this was just before I was unhappy. So that made you unhappy, maybe. Uh, no, I mean, I think that was definitely the start of yeah. me being in a in a circus of Formula One where I um, didn't really felt on my place. Yeah. This was definitely the start of it, yes. Um, did I ever set this? No. I do still remember, as I have a good memory after my, <laughs> you know, brain shunt, um, I still remember the phone call I had with this specific journalist. I still still remember his name as well. I imagine. Uh, he called me up once. He never called me again. I'm still waiting. Um, if, you're, if you're listening. I still remember where I was, in which couch, couch I was sitting. Um, and he was asking me just general questions, like why are you never being involved in those young driver programs like McLaren, Ferrari, Red Bull, etc.? And I just said, like, you know, I've, I've never been asked. Um, I also don't have the contacts. Um, I, I'm, my f whole family doesn't come from racing, you know. It's, it's not like Jos uh, Verstappen did with, with Max, obviously. He he put Max in, in positions and obviously Max delivered and that's why he's he, where he is now. Mm. Uh, but I was never in, in those positions and... Um, I also told him, like, if you are in those programs, like Ferrari, like Red Bull or whatever, you can't really decide in which team you're going to be driving in if it's two liters or if it's World Series or if it's GP2 back then. Because Red Bull obviously worked together with Arden. Um, McLaren worked together with ART or whatever. And for me, it was always very important as a personal aspect to decide in which team I was driving for. Because the environment which I'm in is very important for me as a driver. Same. Um, I, I do remember in World Series, um, I decided myself to go to Fortec. And everybody's like, why you go to Fortec? They never won a championship in World Series. You need to go to Dumps or, or AIT or Tech One back then. And I said, I, found, I feel happy with the team. I, I know the engineer pretty well. I, you know, I, want, I want to drive for Fortec. Um, so I explained them everything and then I got a huge headline like Red Bull treat you like dogs I'm like did he get you in trouble or, or that's in trouble oh yeah 100% yeah. 100% this <laughs> article came I did the, uh, the interview maybe six weeks before it actually came out and I do truly believe that they waited for the Red Bull test because it came out two days before the Red Bull test or one day no way. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I do remember. I won the, the title. Uh, one week later, I got the phone call with this specific guy. I did this interview. And five, six weeks later in Abu Dhabi, one day before the Red Bull test, because that was the prize if you won the mm -hmm. title, um, the article came out. And I remember that I was testing for Sauber. So the first day, the second day I had nothing. And the third day I was supposed to drive for Red Bull. So I jumped out um, out of the car and at, with, at the Sauber test and my manager came along and um, he said, uh, yeah, we need to talk. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, um, you know, I felt quite comfortable in the car. <laughs> uh, you know, I <laughs> did, did, a, did a decent job, uh, didn't shunt anything or I was like, what did I do wrong this time, you know? And then he showed me the article and I was first like, where is this coming from? Uh, I had no idea at that point. Um, I was angry. And obviously you try to solve things at that moment. It's like a very, you know, disgusting of how we're going to solve this issue we are having. Um, and then my manager was talking to Christian Horner at that moment. Obviously they were very unhappy. They want to cancel the Red Bull test. Really? Yeah, they want to me out of the test. Um, as they said, we don't want anything in anybody in the car who treats Red Bull like this. Um, so I was at that moment. I was scared that I was lose the 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 Red Bull test, which was planned. I and that evening, even I had Christian Horner himself on the phone, 
he called me up. Uh, he was very close to basically scream at me on All the right. phone. He was very angry, and I, at that moment, I did not have the balls to tell him like, "Look, I didn't say this." Okay. I was just listening to him, and I was like, kind of like apologizing to him, like, "Yeah, I know, I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry," but. I didn't explain, and I never did. I never had the opportunity to speak to Christian or to speak to to Helmut. Like you know, I never said this, so they don't know the real story. I just my goal is I want to do the Red Bull test and then go on with my life. But if I look back, I would definitely do it different. I would definitely step up to to Christian now or to Helmut. Like, look, man. Um, is journalism. Uh, I never said this. I can prove it in a way or whatever. I don't get these journalists. Which I no, mean, I get it. They sad. try to get a headline for their for their views or whatever. But yeah, for sure. It, it, in this way, you destroy or <coughs> harm somebody's somebody's career. Yeah, and they, they don't they don't care about this. They just say, yeah, but we want to do our job. I I, I, I fully understand. They do their job. They they try everything to. To get something out of, of some people, well, but you, then you, just, you you just you have to write what they say. You sh there should be something with where, I mean, like like for ta it happened for example with Robin or for sure there are some other people who had the same as well. They should just get like I don't know uh, banned for I don't know what. It's just yeah. not nice. It's I'm not just very harsh with it. If I, if I see it, somebody did it with me. I don't do an interview with them again. Yeah, that's I have what one, I do one, one I have one journalist like this. I. I if he asks me for an interview, I don't pick up the phone or I don't answer. Yeah, but that, that's what it definitely I want to do now. Or if someone speaks badly about you, you you call the guy up saying like, you know, we need to speak or what the, what the hell are you doing, etc. like this. But I was very new to this yeah, world. Sure, I didn't know yeah. Formula One. So I yeah. didn't know what to do. I didn't have a guy with experience next to me like we need to do with this or we need to speak to this guy. Or I had, okay, I had a manager, but looking back he was not really focusing on me at all yeah no yeah that's always i mean it's a hard world it's and you, just, you, you know, can't exactly as well mm. it's, it's a hard shitty world and um yeah but yeah, then you moved on then we got reunited exactly <laughs> i remember in 14 vincent called me up in the winter because he always used to call me and and like freely speak about which drivers he was talking to and, and then he dropped your name and I was like, well, that would be good, but I would be very surprised if, if he would actually do that because I was still convinced that you were chasing that Formula 1 yeah, or yeah. single seater or prototype dream. And I remember we spoke like, I don't know, three, four times on the phone yeah, in the winter yeah. uh, asking how is it and this and that. Remember, and then yeah. yeah, you basically told me like, hey, we should drive together and me not knowing the car and, and basically not knowing the championship either. Um, at that moment, I was like, yeah, I can probably make a career out of this. And also my, you know, I was speaking to my dad a lot and he's not into the racing world whatsoever. Um, he said, like, if you can make a career out of it, you should take this opportunity and, and you know, try to do it somewhere else. So... It, did I make the right call? I don't know. You never know. But I just look where I'm now, and I'm I'm quite happy where I am now. But uh, definitely, it was an expensive year for Audi. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. I mean, when we went into that season, it was not the attitude I had. But you kind of thinking like it's like okay, the others are probably shitting their pants. Ah, uh, it's Robin yeah. and me together. Well, I, I was definitely not on pace. Uh, I was a good half a second of you. Well, the first races maybe, but then it was. But yeah, it, it, it kind of went wrong in Nogaro in the first race. Yeah, yeah I do. I do remember <laughs> that Nogaro shunt. Yeah, uh, didn't even make it to the first race. No, we didn't do the first race because he <laughs> destroyed his chassis in qualifying. Yeah. And that was uh, the winning spa chassis, even. Yeah, yeah, that's worse than I did. I mean, I crashed some cars at Audi. Oh, the best was in the second race. You remember? It was the famous first time I actually openly say this: the where I had my concussion. Brand Brand Edge. Edge. Ah, yeah, 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 twice, no? No, well, I had multiple concussions, but that was one of them. But <laughs> no, no, like uh, two shots, no? No, one in pre-practice two, like first lap, first flying lap in the back, in one of the quick corners, I went like in really rearwards. Was not so much damage, but it was a hard hit. 
So, but the practice was over and I went to bed and couldn't sleep, had a headache and in the morning I had to throw up. And I was like, oh shit. I, you look shit that day. Yeah. But <laughs> I was <laughs> like, we missed the first race. If I don't do this race, we might as well pack up and, and, and go on holiday I, this year. No, we had an issue in FB1 as well. Oh yeah, we didn't drive FB1. <laughs> So I come to Ben's Hatch. I don't know the track. I barely know the car even because we missed uh, for the first race. You, we had an issue. Can't remember what it was in FP1. Uh, then you shot an FP2, and then I going for Collie for the first time on a track. It's like great. It's gonna be a great season here. <laughs> <laughs> so we won. We won both races. I was yeah. throw, I was throwing up the whole day after yeah, qualifying yeah. on the grid everywhere. <laughs> you pulled it. Yeah, we went on pole and we we won the race and yeah, you pulled it by half second or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's crazy. Crazy. Was, brain was working properly. But no, better. In yeah. hindsight, I would say I wouldn't do it again. I probably would do it again, but it was very stupid because I had like headaches for months. And a doctor actually once told me if if you have a concussion and you race and you crash again, you have a very high chance of of being like you. <laughs> <laughs> Paralyzed. <laughs> Brain damage. <laughs> so yeah, but yeah, probably would have done it again. But we still didn't, didn't well, for win sure something. No. I didn't win, you won, but because I crashed again and broke my hip. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Then you shot again at Misano. That was definitely a chassis because the engine was two hundred meters away. <laughs> That was a big Sean day. <laughs> I remember that. But you turned a bit to the right, no? <laughs> no, 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 no. no it was the, just the, the track thing. went left. It, v- it looks very much like that on the video. But the track goes left indeed. The track I, went left and you went just... You you, you, yeah, you went, you kept straight. Honestly, yeah. the whole, the, the, the true story is this Jules Simkoviak. S- yeah. Dickhead. I said it. Um, <laughs> like everybody was in, in kind of... It wasn't the first time we were in trouble with him. No. And he squeezed me off the track there, and I was like, hey, dude, like, yeah, yeah, off. So I I've, I didn't follow my line 100%, but it looks much worse on the video. But in hindsight, should the I have done that? The pushed no. you off was also already... I would have just turned... Yeah, anyway. But if you know now, this, the, you know, the, the result of, of that what happened, uh, it wasn't worth it at all, but, ah, but it's, it's always easier in hindsight. It's always after, it's easier. If you know everything afterhand, so it's easy. A lot of things would be different. But definitely, uh, I want to see that bill from that year from Audi. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're still talking the about was, it. The engine was new. Oh, yeah? We put a new engine in just for that race. That's the special why. one. We had to start last because we had an engine issue. Yeah, exactly. New engine. Five laps later, another engine <laughs> gone. <laughs> new engine. Well, the engine was still intact, man, you know? I don't know. Maybe uh, Vincent has it. Probably. <laughs> Couch yeah. table. Oh man! Well, after those uh, lovely crash sites at 2015, <laughs> well, you actually you had a hundred percent no, you, except you didn't do you did some GP2 race, but you had a hundred percent score. You did Formula BMW, Formula Renault, three point uh, World Series. You all won first year, and yeah. then actually also you became champion in 2015. Yeah, the overall one. Yeah, yeah. And then we went to 2016 when we drove together. <laughs> and then it stopped. It went to zero. <laughs> it's a disaster, eh? That was the bad <laughs> year. Uh, yes, that was the first. Yeah, I on the I drove with Laurent and, and Fred Vervige. No, no, that was the Bentley year. Uh, I also in sprint, I crashed into a Bentley exactly. Why so three times you, you crashed like, out Bentleys? You, you like Bentleys, huh? Yeah, I don't think they want to contact me anymore. No, no. <laughs> Not much to do there either at the moment, I think. No, but I remember you said before the start, uh, take it easy. They will do like five, six laps with their tires, and then they drop off. And then uh, after the, at the end of the first lap. Uh, it was lap three or something. I saw a gap. You forgot about what Robin said. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can do it. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, it was a bad moment. You know, the actually, when you think about it now, it's quite stupid, but Mizano, you know, the quick part, where you had the, the triple right at the end, mm-hmm. the last right one, just before the hairpin, I was looking in the mirror there because I thought somebody would pass me in that corner, which <laughs> normally can never happen. <laughs> no. <laughs> and I look in front of me, and there was the Bentley. Good job. But we had fun that year. We went. I remember we had Budapest because uh, I think um, it was race two, which then you had to do second stint. I started, and then something happened. I think in the chicane, like we had to retire. I don't know. Yeah, I think you uh, had contact. I don't really remember. I crashed. Yeah, you had contact, and we had to retire. <laughs> but then we went to the swimming pool after that. You know the, ah. the, the the water park in Budapest. Yeah, and no, we were watching the race from the water park. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, true. We went to the water park during the race. True, yeah. I can't remember what happened now. Uh, oh, you remember the water park? 
Yeah, I remember the water park. I remember I st- uh, us standing at the water park and then we were watching turn one <laughs> yeah, from far yeah. away. Uh, yeah, true. it was good fun. Yeah, yeah, that was not a great year, that was. No. no. But also endurance was not good. I crashed into quite some Bentleys that year. Yeah. Um, oh, the pace was okay, but that was like the strange year when we had this um, weight in the car when we to compensate. Yeah. But my pace was not bad. You were on K, but on my... Um, now we had a lot of weight in the car. Compared yeah, because to we were both light. It yeah. was still before your breakthrough uh, moment, I guess. Yeah. 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 Somewhere happened. I, can, I think to I fell down again once and then it just it switched ah, off. Because I remember I Mies was doing uh, the double hooker with Adak and they asked me to do the the last race with Enzo. Uh, yeah, in, yeah, in yeah. Barcelona. Yeah, in Barcelona. And I jumped in that car and I was uh, suddenly... Yeah, but this was the whole, because I remember that as well. That year, nobody could get close to Mies and even Enzo when he won the championship and all credits to Enzo. Yeah. But... But they had no they, weight in the car. They had no weight. Yeah, because of Enzo was a bit more yeah, weightful. I, I, and then I, I, you had Mies, which was like you two. I pulled the gap from 10 seconds in, the, what is it, 15 laps or something. Mm. Yeah, I remember yeah. the year as well. It was... Yeah, but nowadays it's still a bit like this, but less. Because no, if you look less. at uh, Boguslavski, he's also a bit more weightful. <laughs> but LMDH is going to be big. It's still the average weight of the three drivers. Yeah. But LMDH, the car, no. it, yeah. But the car is super weight sensitive. It's like, it like is. The Porsche and Le Mans is like 10 kilos or 4 tenths. Yeah, same at B2. Perfect. It's so, massive. Yeah, I'm, I'm like on a full on diet because I'm a bit taller than. And you too, and if I, okay, I'm not driving with any light guys, but I can be the light guy now, so. I'm not on the Keep diet. it going. Yeah, I, know, I can imagine. <laughs> oh, where's my chocolate bar? <laughs> I had one this morning. Um, you also did a, well, it's a, a know-how, I know it. Uh, you did an IndyCar test. Yeah. Was it last year, no, two years ago? No, this was a long time ago. Oh. This was... Um, after my Andretti season in Formula E, so this was season two of Formula E, six years ago. Oh, I was a bit wrong. Um, well, we know IndyCar, it's it's the hard to drive. How was, how was the experience? Definitely the most physical car I've driven so far. But like purely arms, shoulders, arms? Uh, purely arms, yes. Yeah. The actual car to drive it is very easy. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I always like high downforce cars and it makes me drive very easy with those cars. The more downforce I have, the more comfortable I feel, the quicker I'm getting. So I think that's how I see it. But driving an Indy car, you have quite some downforce because it was that year with a lot of wings everywhere and I just couldn't turn the wheel. <laughs> just come to the happen. I, I just could not turn the wheel. So tough. I, I hear from guys that it's really tough. But yeah, but if you yeah, look I at mean, the field, I, they are all like. Yeah. I mean, masters. yeah. I, I come from Formula E, which was not so difficult. Obviously, I come from GT, where you, which we had power steering. Uh, jumped in the high in those Indy car high down for cars again for the first time in what is it two three years again. Uh, my neck was actually very fine, surprisingly. Uh, I was driving in mid Ohio. Yeah, yeah. I think you know the track. That's quite. Uh, it's not yeah. a lot of rest, I'd say. No. So you have this first corner. It goes up this, left. Uh, or is it this one? No, it's the, f- the left one. Yeah. Yeah, which is in the car, it's like just or just not flat. Okay. And at the beginning of the day, it was like at the first 20, 25 laps, it was, it was okay. It was physically tough, but I could handle it. Uh, but every time you came back in, they plug in the car and they're basically, they, you're alive. So they can speak to you straight and they, they hear everything yeah, you yeah. say, you don't need to press a button. Yeah, it's typical American. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. How's the car? I was like, I'm sorry, mate. they plug in and, and they ask straight away, how's the car? And I was like, yeah, give me a minute. They <laughs> out of breath and I was coughing and I, I was like, <laughs> yeah, but I impressed you the 25 laps. Yeah, uh, after twenty five, I was I was getting I was getting difficult. Uh, eventually, I did fifty five, something fifty five, fifty seven, something like that. Um, so this was just over half a day, and 
just because that in corner one, I turned in and knowing that with this angle of steering wheel, I'm not making the corner, <laughs> but I just couldn't turn more physically. <laughs> so, so I needed to go off the throttle completely to lose the downforce on the front end to then be able to turn. And then I boxed, I said, I'm done. It's <laughs> probably the smartest to stop so, that. Yeah. <laughs> then I, I jumped out and said, yeah, guys, I'm done. I wouldn't mind having a go, well, just to try. Actually, when I spoke to, I mean, Roger Penske, I spoke a couple of times to him, and I had between the drivers, I was like, we should, we should push him because, I mean, he owns a track, he owns an NASCAR team, an IndyCar team, and an DH team to, like, make a day where we all swap cars. Try an S car, try an Indy car. Oh, that'd be nice. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I asked them, <laughs> like the second time we spoke. <laughs> what did he say? Like, oh, yeah, that's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I don't know if he just said it or but it would be would be cool. But my wife told me she would divorce me if I do ovals. So. I, I would not do oval. I also would. I mean, well, honestly, it's, I think it's no. beep hard. Like I would just like tr want to try it, not race it maybe, but just no, not even that. No? Yeah, but you have to no. like, like they do what like three hundred laps. I I don't know how I don't care about how many laps they do. Which <laughs> yeah, it's no, but just, you have to keep your focus for three hundred laps to uh, for me know, that's drive in the circle. Uh, that's not the problem. Uh, for me, the issue is that I know how I drive cars. I know that I first go over the limit and then know where the limit is, so I go underneath it. That's typical how I drive. And oval, you do this only once. Yeah. In the fence. Yeah. That's why it's not for me. I know it's not for me. I never tried it. I don't want to try. I'm fine. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for sure, it's... I just would want to like to know how it feels. And I think it's very difficult just to know think, to, yeah. to have the I experience. Think for sure, it's very I difficult. think it's very difficult. I mean, to drive... The, for the, the, the racing is, I think, difficult. Yeah, because you have the spotter in your ears all the time you pushing have to you. You the guts as well to, I mean, to do it. With yeah, yeah, to drive yeah. around the outside and the wall like the, this one guy did. Respect, uh, I, I cannot do it. I know I cannot do it. Maybe if you keep driving on the wall, the yeah, time, sure, it works sure. for you. Sure, I mean, I saw a few shots in the car. I, I know a few stories. Uh, which Hinscliffe, I think it was, who had a suspension up his ass. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He crashed. Wait, wait lube over that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't know when it was, but he crashed. Uh, he went in like front right, hard in. Suspension obviously broke. Went through the top, through his ass. <laughs> yeah. It's less than a Then I'm like, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> You're not into those kind imagine, of things. No, imagine <laughs> no. He, goes to the, he goes to the hospital. Hey, could you help me? I've got a, I've got a suspension on my, my ass. No, <laughs> <laughs> no. Nah, nah. I'm happy where I am. What's your ultimate dream to achieve before you start to work full time in uh, Friends Unlimited? Uh, <laughs> I don't really have specific goals. Uh, I know you have. You want to win the big races, 24 races, etc. I don't have this. You want to be a legend like Dries said last time? Or? Uh, well, I, I am a legend already. I already am, yeah. No. <laughs> No, it's like, uh, for me, the most important thing is I want to be competitive, always. Yeah. And if that means I finish third, if that means I finish, you know, top five, as long as I feel like I can still be able to win races, um, obviously, you know, it depends on the team, etc. I don't need to explain that, but just on your own performance, um, that's the most important thing. It's not really a a goal you you should reach, um, but yeah. <laughs> oh, what's so funny? What? It's, it sounds <laughs> like you just farted. <laughs> it was uh, somebody's stomach. I don't know. Was it your one? I don't know. No. I think we have two sensitive mics. Oh, you didn't uh, hear it? No. <laughs> I don't hear anything actually the whole time. I tried to like keep my laugh down, but uh, oh, you don't hear anything. No. <laughs> the <whole time. laughs> doesn't matter have good ears um, but I, I don't have a specific goal no I want to win as many races as possible that's yeah. for sure okay. no I, I want to win the overall Le Mans. me too next year will be pretty cool 100 yeah, yeah that would be I mean next, it, next year I'm not there but is it something you're envisioning to be in an LMDH or LMH yeah I think for sure 
to what's coming up in the WAC. It's it's obviously very nice for for the manufacturers and and for the time that's coming ahead. Um, I remember looking back in those you know golden times with Audi, uh, just the Bentley car that won Le Mans, um, Peugeot, uh, Porsches. Those were the good times in in WAC, mm-hmm. and I truly believe that those times will come back. I think all the fans that are there like 200,000, 300,000 fans, they all want to see 35 cars lining up and one of those 35 cars will win the, the championship. Yeah. The last few years, it's which Toyota will win. Yeah, it's a one-man show. Yeah, it's it's not entertaining. It's also not entertaining for 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 race drivers, I believe. Um, I always want to be in very high competitive fields. I want to be part of the best drivers. I want to try to beat the best drivers and... I think definitely in the WEC, that's the place to be in the future. Who knows? Maybe in a couple of years we'll all have a go to it against each other. Or? Yeah, shunt each other off. <laughs> that <Tetre> rouge. <laughs> Three of us oh, together. Or will be us two against you, maybe. Who knows? Is that an announcement? No. No, not really. I already shunted in Lamar, so I'm done. Yeah, I saw that. I didn't. I, 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 was, I was in pain for a week, huh? Was that bad? It didn't look that. Nah, bad. nah, it didn't look that bad for sure not. But, but those are most of the times the worst. It doesn't I, look bad. I, I remember I saw the wall coming. Like, yeah, okay, I'm done. <laughs> but I think I just hit the support wall of the guardrail. Okay. And that's why the impact was so high. It was like, oh, the blue light went on, so it was over 25 g. Uh-huh. Yeah. Went to the medical center, check everything. And the moment of impact, I something I wouldn't say snapped, but something went wrong in my back, and I couldn't sleep from the pain. And uh, oh, yeah? took me a know. week to come back. Okay. Yeah. To your training program or to your what? To your f- training program? No, I went to the physio a few times because my 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 spine was not in the straight line anymore. Oh. This is something we can because we spoke about it last time. We always. I always compare you and me together, me, you know, training, doing everything I can, you doing nothing you can. <laughs> um, and I laughed last time, it's that you look too much at Robin. Because yeah. I think, I mean, just joking, but I think two of you are, are a bit similar on that, on that way. Um, you're also more, let's say, not, not in critical, but more laid back, or I don't see you biking 200 kilometers a year. Um, a decade, no, no. So how do you how do you see that? Because, um, well, f- first of all, the, my cardio it's disastrous for sure. Uh, quite some people know the story from the Audi uh, fitness camp, which wasn't so so nice. Not anyway. everybody, so you can explain. Yeah, uh, no, no, we don't go there. <laughs> Like Who overtook you again? <laughs> was it uh, Ernst uh, Nah, it's... Uh, I'm just very bad in, in cardio. And I, I know, and I also hate to do it. I don't like to do it. That's why I don't do it. <laughs> it's easy as that. It I, doesn't give you any issues while you're driving? Never. No, never. Um, I do... I like to play around with weights mm-hmm. to challenge me, to challenge myself. Like, um, for example, I want to squats 100 kilos or whatever this target I want to reach this I do uh, I did this back in the day in 2011 and 12 um, but then when I reached Formula 1 I did like 80 laps in the test, jumped out easy, I stopped training it's like <laughs> why, the, why do I do it for you know, you, you reach a point this is the highest level of motorsport life is easy so why should I train that was my thinking back then um, but I, I never did any cycling. I never, never did any running either. Um, so that's why I'm just so shocking in those cardio exercises. And I think Dries looks at me and he wants to copy paste me. So I think <laughs> that that's the way to go. Well, he does it times two, maybe. Uh, it's just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> well, but to be honest, well, the most I never important have is any if, problem as yeah, well. Yeah, if, I mean, I'm so convinced it gives you a benefit rather than than. And disadvantage, but if you, I also do it because I love to do it. I like to do it. Um, but if you survive and are able to do your job, 
as good as you can without any problems, then yeah, everybody how he wants and how he feels he needs to. Yeah, for sure. And and we we live a bit in those motorsports world where exercise and being fit is very important for some people, for bosses especially. But at the end of the day, if you win races, that's all that they care about. Yeah, until the point where you don't win a race, and then they're like, oh, "But look at exactly. this." Exactly. That's the only. So keep on winning. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's the target. Very easy. <laughs> keep on winning. It's a good point. It's a good point. Um, well, in the beginning, you asked the question, "What?" Because you've experienced Lawrence, well, mainly as a teammate, but we've driven together. But we've now actually driving more together as sharing cars instead of racing against each other. Mm -hmm. What would you say is? Uh, the difference or the between you two yeah like the, well, for sure we have the, the the training difference like he Lawrence is just for sure putting more training and fitness and <coughs> let's say um, trying to be on a hundred percent well I, I worked with Lawrence I work with you True. there's a few years in between um, obviously you were quite a bit younger so you don't really understand of what was going on a few times <laughs> not so I'm not saying it, that changed but still um <laughs> Lawrence is definitely a harder worker by by quite a bit. Um, he wants to improve a lot of aspects. He's I wouldn't say he's hard on the team, but he uh, he just always wants to improve. Well, you and I'm similar in that. More laid back, like yeah, we'll be fine, and you know I have a few dents in the pocket, and I did a mistake there, and it will be fine. At the end of the day, it for sure will be fine because I've I've been in the same situation every single race weekend. Um, <laughs> but that's definitely the the biggest difference between you guys. You're complete opposite of each other in that sense. Yeah, that's what that everyone says. It's crazy how opposite you actually can be thinking about yeah. that we're brothers. But I think we definitely speak to Raf. Yeah, we well he was our previous guest. Ah, on, on okay. He episode. said the same. He was drunk. He said when he made. <laughs> <laughs> no, when he made you, uh, it's very obvious. <laughs> and you rem I remember you because I was older. You fell a lot of times when you were young. You always had these blue spots on your head because you fell down. <laughs> yeah, you always pushed me because I was already quicker than you back then. Oh, no. oh here we go. <laughs> by the way, by the way, I checked oh, here we go. our driver yeah. database. Because uh, you want to you wanna show, uh, tell it every podcast we do? Yeah, yeah, all the time. Tell what? Me what? Last time, my father said, because um, we had to record it two times so when something wrong went the first time. But, that yeah, Dries at this point in his career has yet he, ha he has achieved more than you had at that point. Mm. And in the show, I was like, ah. and, and Jacqueline as well, that thinking. So we went on driver database. You know this website? Yeah. 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 You have this win percentage and yeah. podium percentage, and it showed the opposite. So he he still doesn't understand. Um, <laughs> but I went to look at you. Yeah, a uh, long time ago when I was in that website, I don't know. I was expecting. I didn't look into detail, but I thought you would have been higher than both of us. What I am? Uh, 13%. 13. You are? 17. And I am? 15. Oh. I'm, I'm second. Yeah. If my calculations are right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's True. It's getting better with math. <laughs> Good calculation, that. Uh, I'm... For me, on those things, I really don't care. No, no we were just laughing. Just, no, 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 I know. I had I know, to give him an answer with his big mouth all the time. So. Yeah, he just wants to prove something. But why am I 13 then? <laughs> you, don't, you don't care, right? <laughs> no, it's going on. <laughs> no, I, I need to look at I didn't look in detail, but normally everything's on there. It should be. I yeah. don't think everything is on there. Ah, it should I think be. quite good, actually. When, when, uh, who's doing this? I don't know. Yeah. You paid him, maybe. Maybe it goes automatic, huh? Mm. Well, whoever the guy who who's doing it doesn't have a life. <laughs> <laughs> now we'll drop down to eleven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm out. Um, what is your next race? My next race, uh, Mexico, formally. When? Second weekend of January, out of my head. Same date as twenty five Dubai. Uh, I think so. I don't know where when that race is. Yeah, also second week of January. Yeah, don't call me up. <laughs> <laughs> Very quick question about that because we're closing to the end. But Formula E, I know you drivers earn good money there. I know the races are entertaining. They, they look entertaining. It's nice. 
tracks, but you can obviously not say you don't, but do you really, is it really appealing? Is it fun to drive? Is it, it sounds very complicated, a lot of simulator days, uh, if I hear it from everybody. It's definitely, by far, the most difficult car I drive. Yeah? By far. Okay. Because everything is different. The whole way of driving a car, how a car works, as you cannot compare to any single seat or to any GT car whatsoever. Because you're so much into data, um, you're so relying on the team, the performance engineer especially, um, to work with. Uh, you have billions of sensors on the car and everything works on those sensors. So to give you an explanation, like the beginning of Formula E, so this was season five, um, I didn't really understand the full software yet because I was I was new, and um, I w I was in Valencia the test, and I was locking front wheels all the time. It's like fuck, you know, brake balance is too much to the front. And then the engineer came to me, the performance engineer, said, "No, no, no, brake brake balance is too much to the rear." <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, man, this guy needs to go. He's crazy, you know. <laughs> fuck, <laughs> you know, like uh, I'm I'm working with a retired guy here. <laughs> And then he explained me, and he was right. Mm -hmm. So just because we have a kind of like an ABS system, it's called IBS, only on the rear axle. So if you hit the brakes, and the rear axle is like, oh, I'm going to lock, I'm going to move brake bounce to the front. Mm -hmm. Then it makes sense. So this is only one aspect of how formally e works. But in these circumstances, you are 20 times in one weekend. And yeah. it's not straightforward, like, we have an issue, we solve it. No, we have an issue, and sometimes you cannot figure out a way to solve it. It's very frustrating, and that's why it's very difficult to understand. On the other hand, if you put the car on the ground FB FB1, and you know we have a good car, life is easy, life is great, you probably finish on a podium, and you enjoy it. Okay. But if you put the car on the ground FP1 and you're P17 and you're half a second off, it's very frustrating. And you can't change it around no. at all. Okay. So it gives you a higher satisfaction feeling when you do it right. Because it requires a lot of work. Yeah. But it also frustrates you a lot when it goes wrong. Yeah. So that's why you're pushing yourself all the time like, I want to do it right, I want to perform, and that's why if you're standing on a podium, even though it's P2, P3, it gives you a higher satisfaction feeling. Yeah. Okay. Interesting to hear. So, but definitely, you should try it. Difficult. Just drive it maybe, yes, but already the sim days would like turn me off. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not a sim guy at all, I'm second off you guys in the sim. And then I jump in, it's like, yeah, you're missing in this corner and in this corner. I'm like, man, this is sim, come on. You know, I'm, I'm not a sim driver. How many sim days do you do a year? Uh, a year, I don't know. I do three sim days before each race weekend. Oh, so it depends how many race weekends I have. Uh, I go to Valencia next week. The week after, I do another two days of sim to prepare for Mexico. And then before Mexico, another three days of sim. So... I mean, I can't see a sim anymore. That would be the worst Lovely. part for me, I think. Yeah, for sure. Time. And it's it's not nice because those sim days are not really are not for 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 you or for me as a driver. It's, it's just for the engineers, yeah. just to put the software to to kind of like have an indication like, oh, we need this kind of software, we need this uh, systems in that corner, etc. So you're just pounding around, doing hundred laps a day, and Meanwhile, for you, you barely learn anything. Mm -hmm. But you need a driver to do it and to understand the car. It's frustrated. I can imagine. So, try it. Lovely. <laughs> no, okay. I think uh, that will be it for today. Um, thank you for coming by, Robin. Um, Appreciate I hope you enjoyed it. You didn't fall asleep. So. Do you bring a no. gift for us? We forgot, a what? To, we forgot to mention that gift? to him. I didn't know anything about the gift. Okay, no worries. The gift yeah. is sitting right here. I'm the biggest gift. <laughs> well, I don't know if we can auction you on the foundation. Yeah, no. <laughs> we need to pay extra to get me away, I guess. 
<laughs> no. For everybody who's listening and watching, um, you can find the podcast on Apple or Spotify, or if you're listening, you can watch it on YouTube. If you're watching, you can listen to it. Oh, okay. Can you imagine? Uh, leave a rating. Um, and our next guest. Chris. Well, um, our next guest will be Vincent Vosse. It's going to be a long episode. Our, well, your ex team principal, our team principal, will be a, a long, funny yeah. storytelling podcast. And we'll probably still discuss it together, but um, we'll make maybe a fan proposal where we maybe we'll make something on Instagram uh, and somebody can maybe a fan can win it and maybe we'll be sitting here with us. We will let you guys know. Or if anybody has a good idea for a next guest, uh, you can always let us know. Or oh, Robin, you have any ideas? <sighs> Teresa is convinced he can convince Valentino Rossi to come on the show. I ah, know, forget it. 100%. <laughs> I even drove sim with him a few days ago. He was like, ciao, Dri, it's all good. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Uh, a good guest. <clears throat> Jules Simkoviak. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I vote yes. Oh. <laughs> you can find him some, a nice room here in the basement where we'll never find <laughs> out again. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. Uh, okay. I think that was enough bullshit for today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See you next time. Ciao. Ciao, ciao.